in today's video, we're calculating our high and low day. What's up YouTube? Welcome to the video. My name is Tyler, also known as the Fit Chemist, and I help people take control of their lives by taking control of their fitness and nutrition habits so that ultimately we can lead healthier and happier lives. So if you're new here, welcome. Please consider subscribing. Turn those notification bells on so you don't miss when I post new videos. And if you are returning, welcome back. I'm so glad that you are here. Picture this for a second. Summer's right around the corner. Let's say you just started a cut. You're maybe four or five weeks into this cut. You got some macros from a coach or a website and you've been tracking your food and calories diligently. You've been plugging everything into MyFitnessPal so you know your macros have been on point. You're starting to get some momentum. Your physique is starting to change. You're seeing the results you want. But then let's say your buddy calls you up and invites you on a getaway the following weekend. You wanna keep that momentum going, but you know when you're away, you're going to overconsume calories what do you do? The situation that I was just describing is one that many of my clients have been in, myself included. I've been in that situation. A life event comes up. You want to enjoy that. You don't want to miss out on that opportunity, but you also don't want to sacrifice your goals. So fear not, friend. I have good news for you. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate high and low calorie days so you can still enjoy those life events while still attaining your goals. Specifically, we're going to be looking at three scenarios. The first one is going to be the one that I just described. So maybe you have a weekend getaway, you know you want to enjoy that, you want to have two higher calorie days on the weekend and then five lower calorie days during the week. If you have a refeed coming up, maybe your coach assigned you a refeed or that you're coaching yourself and you want to give yourself a refeed, that would also fall into this category. The second scenario is going to be figuring out how to have higher calorie days on training days and then lower calorie days on non-training days. So some people like eating a little bit more on the days that they're training. We'll show you how to calculate that as well. And then the last scenario is going to be when you're bulking and maybe you have an unplanned low calorie day pop up. Maybe something came up, you got busy, you forgot to eat. How do you figure out, how do you reassess and how do you get back on track for the rest of the week. I hope that after watching this video and seeing all three diverse examples with different sets of target macros and how we adjust accordingly, that you then have the knowledge on how to adjust your macros accordingly for whatever might pop up in your life. But with that being said, if for some reason you stumbled across this video and you don't know what macros are or you don't know how to calculate them for yourself, I have done a video on this. So I'll put the thumbnail over here. I'll put a link to a time card somewhere up here so you can go ahead check that out and then come back to this one. But if you do know what macros are and you do need to know how to calculate high and low calorie days, I'm gonna grab my computer and let's dive into it. Okay, so we've got my computer. I'm now in my calorie tracking spreadsheet. If you are unfamiliar with this and you wanna know more, there's a free download down in the description box below and I'll also put the thumbnail over here as well as a time card up here so you can click on that. Go ahead and watch a tutorial on how to completely use this spreadsheet in detail, in depth, but that's not the topic of this video. Nonetheless, we are gonna use this spreadsheet to highlight some of those examples because I think it's gonna make more sense visually than if I were to just explain math to you or just do it on the board. So we're gonna start with scenario one, again, in which we have five low days during the week and then two high days on the weekend. So my spreadsheet actually starts with Sunday as day one. So I'm gonna put that as a high day. I'm gonna put a low day here and then I'm gonna move that down. So we got five low days and then Saturday is gonna be a high day as well. Typically you put your weight in this column, but again, I'm just gonna use this to denote high and low days so we can see and easily reference. Let's say our target macros are actually 150 protein, let's say 300 carbs, and then we're also gonna put 75 fat. And then let's say for our weekend getaway, or maybe it's a refeed, we want 500 extra calories per day. I'm gonna keep protein constant because I think that's generally a good suggestion. You should aim to keep protein constant. So I'm just gonna plug in 150 for all of these here, and then we can play around with carbs and fats. But let's say we end up going with, I don't know, 365 grams of carbs each day. You can see the spreadsheet is already auto-populating down here. So our average for this hypothetical week is at 365 and we need to even that back out to our target of 300. The way that we would do that is by finding what excess amount of carbs we consumed on those two days. So each day is 65. So we'd multiply that by two and get 130 grams of extra carbs for those two days. And then what we need to do is figure out how many carbs do we have to subtract from the low days. So if on those two days we consumed 130 grams of carbs, we need to equalize that out across the other five days. So I'm gonna divide that by five. That gives us a value of 26. And then from there, we need to subtract that from our target. 
So our low days are gonna be 300 grams of carbs minus 26 grams. That's gonna give us 274 grams of carbs for each of those low days. And you'll see as I release this here, our average just went back down to 300. All right, I just realized, let's say we're gonna put this as a high day and low day, my bad. <laughs> I went ahead and switched the low and high day denoters over here, so just ignore that for now. But let's just say we had five low days in a row and two high days. But let's say we have 100 grams of fat on both of those two weekend days. What we then need to do is equalize that across the other five days. So we do that by finding the total amount of fat we consumed in excess, so that would be 25 grams extra per day times two day, which gives us 50 grams of fat. We then divide that across the five low days and that gives us 10 grams of fat that we need to subtract from our target to equalize this back out. So this needs to be 65 grams of fat because 75 minus 10. And then you'll see once I bring that down, boom, that averages back out to 75. And then it looks like for the week, we hit all of our macros to a T. You can see the compliance values over here on the right are all at 100%. What I'm gonna do is go ahead here and denote this with some colors so then we can see that these low days, I'll highlight them in blue, and then the high days, I will highlight in orange. So I've done that. Now let's say that you were gonna do this, so you're planning ahead, you know the high days, those are gonna be your macros for those days. What you could do is essentially just jot these down in a notes app or write them down on a post-it note or something. And then that way, when you're going back and you're deleting these values, because obviously if you're using this spreadsheet, you need to enter in all the macros that you actually ate. But nonetheless, this is an easy way to find your macros. So for low days, it'd be 150 protein, 274 grams of carbs, and 65 grams of fat. And then once that weekend rolled around, you'd be 150 protein, 365 grams of carbs, and 100 grams of fat. We can then go ahead with scenario two. So let's say this individual wants more calories on their training days and let's say they train on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. So let's denote that in the weight column. Let's say this individual was 220 grams of protein, say 400 grams of carbs, and then also 100 grams of fat. Let's then go ahead and plug in some values for our high days. So again, I'm just gonna keep protein constant. I think that's a good recommendation, but in the next one, I'll show you what to do if your protein is not constant. Then let's say this individual wants 100 grams extra of carbs per day on training days. So we'll add 100 to 400, which is our target. So let's say for all the high days, we're gonna have 500 grams of carbs. And then let's say that that individual also wants 20 extra grams of fat each of those days. So I'm gonna plug in 120 for all the training days. So now we need to go back and figure out what our low day macros are going to be. We use the same method. We need to figure out how much excess carbs we consumed. So in this case, we had 100 grams of carbs per day extra that we need to account for, and that was over four days. So that's 400 grams of carbs, and then we need to normalize that across three days. You divide that by three, that gives us 133 grams of carbs that we need to subtract from the target. So we do 400 minus 133, and that gives us 267. So you'll see here, as I enter these values, the average carbs for the week is gonna normalize back down to 400. We're at 400.1, close enough. Let's do the same thing for fat. So for fat, we consumed 80 grams of excess fat because we have 20 times four high days for that week. We then need to equalize that across the three low days. So you divide that by three, that gives us 27, 26.6, but I'm gonna round up to 27. And then we need to subtract 27 from our target macro. So that'd be 100 minus 27. So that gives us 73. So for our low days, it's gonna be 73 grams of fat. And you'll see that equalizes out again, 99.9 close enough. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and denote this with color again. So we'll say our high days, these would be our macros if you wanted those for the week. And then these other values are gonna be our low days. So again, highlighted in orange, those are gonna be our high days. And then highlighted in blue, those are gonna be our low days. Once you have these high and low day macros, you can just jot it down on a post-it note or your phone or whatever app you wanna use. So that way you can remember them and then delete this information and plug in the actual data once you have it. We'll get into this last example in just one second, but my question of the day is, are you someone who enjoys eating the same number of calories and macros each and every day throughout the week like me? Or are you someone that's like this last example in which you like higher calorie days for training and then lower calorie days on rest days? Let me know in the comments down below. And with that, 
let's hop back into it. We can now look at that third example that I mentioned earlier. So this time, rather than being in a cut, let's say someone was bulking and then they had an unanticipated low calorie day. How do you figure out how many calories you need to eat for the remaining days so that way you're still on track at the end of the week? Well, let's say this individual has a target of 180 grams of protein, we'll say 480 grams of carbs, and then we'll say 140 grams of fat. So calories are up there, we're almost at 4,000 calories. And then let's say this individual consumed that amount of calories and macros for the first two days of the week. So then let's say Tuesday rolled around and then they got busy, they forgot to eat or they didn't have meal prep stuff ready for whatever reason, they just couldn't get the calories in and they had 140 grams of protein, 320 grams of carbs, and then let's say 80 grams of fat that day. So now we need to figure out how many calories do we eat for the remaining four days so that way we are still on track at the end of the week. To do that, we have a very similar method to what we were doing with the first two examples, except this time, instead of subtracting those values away from the target macros, we actually need to add them back because we need to eat more calories to make those calories up. So for protein that day, we were 40 grams under. So what we need to do is divide that by four because we have four remaining days in the week. That's gonna be 10 grams of protein that we need to make up each of these days. So we just go ahead and add that back to 180. So you can see if we put 190 and then we normalize that, boom, protein is back to 180. So our protein goal is on track. 320, we need to subtract that from target, which is 480. So 480 minus 320 is 160 grams of carbs that we missed that day. We need to make that up over four days. So we divide by four, that comes out to 40. And then we need to add 40 back to our target carbs, which is 480. So that is going to come out to be 520. So we just enter 520 here. And then last thing, we do it with fat. So this day we missed 140 minus 80. So that's gonna be 60 grams of fat that we need to make up. If you divide that by four, that's 15 grams of fat per day that we need to make up. So then you add 15 back to our target, which is 140. So that's gonna give us 155 grams of fat each of those days. Once I pull that down, boom, you can see that averages out. The compliance is again 100%. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna note these as like high days again with the color scheme. So that's gonna be orange. And then this one I will highlight in blue because that was this unanticipated low day. And then these first two, I'm just gonna leave unhighlighted because those do actually meet the required targets for that week. So that's gonna be it for the three scenarios. Keep in mind, these are just examples. I picked nice numbers so that way when we subtract things and round and divide, it just came out to be nice and even numbers. But one thing I do wanna point out is do not have this expectation of all of your calorie compliance gonna be exactly 100%. Same thing with macros. Please do not obsess over the minutia and try to get like one or two grams of carbs in at the end of the day so that you hit your macros perfectly. I'd say if you hit plus or minus 10 grams on protein and carbs and then plus or minus five grams on fat, that should be good enough. Our bodies are way more complex than just hitting these numbers exactly to a T. You're gonna burn a varying amount of calories from day to day anyways, so don't focus on that. Just focus on getting in that range and you should be good to go. As always though, I'm here to help. So if after watching this video, you're still a little confused or you have a scenario which you're not quite sure how to apply this math to, feel free to reach out. Let me know in the comments down below or send me a DM on Instagram and I would love to help you. All right guys, that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know know in the comments down below and again if you are new here be sure to subscribe turn those notification bells on because I post new videos every single Friday and you do not want to miss when they go live and with that I'll see you in the next video